for 72 points on 12 touchdowns. Luther Booker told me he feels Smith's dependable range is 30 yards. And this is going to be a 30-yarder. Just, just under 30 yards. You can see they're spotting it down at the 19-yard line. Quentin Smith trying to put Yates ahead. The kick is wobbling off to the left side. He hooked it left. It is no good with 8.23 to go in the second quarter. Still no score. And we will be back right after this brief pause. Hi, I'm Dennis Brewster, sales manager of John Spear Cadillac. Cadillac, because you could possibly get a full year's depreciation by buying in December. The value of your car will be worth more today than it will be after the first of the year. And that investment tax credit is the best reason to buy right now. At John Spear, we have an excellent selection of the full-size luxury Cadillacs. We have one to fit your particular needs. Come see us at John Spear Cadillac, Abilene. Brown's Appliance is the affordable way to buy the appliances on your Christmas list, like VCRs. This sharp VCR with remote control is just $16.27 a month. We have a wide selection of TVs, too, including this 19-inch Hitachi remote for just $23.24 a month. Select from many styles of gas ranges, like this Roper for just $18.80 a month. And Santa will be popping in every Saturday till Christmas, so join us at Brown's Appliance Center at 5465 South First. Back at Texas Stadium, no score, 8.23 to go second quarter. Ray Gaskin along with Norm Itzkus and our sideline reporters, Jay Hendricks and Tony Thirio. Delighted to have you with us on this holiday afternoon. Anderson, the lone wide receiver, splits out on the near side. First down play for Permian. It's Bryant, number 18, a young man who missed several games with a sternum injury. Gets it up to the 22-yard line. Larry Gill makes the tackle. Let's go down to Jay Hendricks now for another update. Jay? Just talked about Woody Bryant. He's the place kicker for Permian. Now, last week, he had trouble. He missed three field goals. Cypress Fairbanks missed three field goals. Now you see one just missed. Field goal kickers are having their troubles out here, and I don't know why, but they just can't seem to kick the uprights. Maybe one of them will split it here pretty quick, and we'll uh, get the scores uh, to change and put some points on here. Back to you guys. Okay, thanks, Jay. Second down, eight at the 22-yard line. Harrington, draw play, gets the ball to Sider, 25, and he battles his way to a first down across the 30-yard line. Mark Sider, 191-pound senior, 536 yards rushing on the season. Melvin Foster made the tackle, Norman. They get over 1,700 yards from a couple of workhorse fullbacks, Lott and Sider. This club alternates their fullback. That's how they get their plays in. As you can see, Sider out, lot in. That's how John Wilkins, who coordinates his own offense, gets his plays in. They get more yards out of two just workmanlike fullbacks than probably anybody else in the state. Lauterbach splits right and Henderson down at the bottom. And there's nothing there this time. It is Marcus Lott, tackled by uh, James Goode. 225-pound senior, 6'4". At least 10 blue-chip players, college prospects, major college prospects, on the Yates football squad. Yates, has, by the way, Yates has turned out people like Dexter Manley, now That's with the Redskins, right. Elvis Toast Patterson, the starting cornerback for the Giants, Reggie Phillips, the uh, SMU defensive back that is now with the Chicago Bears, and they've got another bunch of them on this club. Second down, long yardage. At the 27, Harrington, draw play again. And Sider, good determined effort, but he didn't get much out of it. And now the Permian fans are wanting a penalty, no flags. Chris Gardner, the linebacker, made the tackle for Houston Yates. They didn't especially like the fact that the official blew the whistle early on Sider when he wasn't down. He got about another three yards twisting and falling forward to the 33 but the official marked it at the 30, it changes what would have been a third and seven to a third and 10. Not much difference in your play call in those two situations. They've managed to get to Harrington three times already. He rolls right, and this time he's got the time, throws it upfield, and it is almost intercepted at the 45-yard line. He threw it into very heavy traffic. Greg Eaglin, the safety man for the Yates Lions, almost had the pickoff. If 
Odessa Permian is going to throw the football. They're going to have to throw it some to keep the Yates defense honest. A big, fast Yates defense who can stuff the run. They're going to have to throw it when nobody thinks they're going to throw it. When they have to throw it in a passing situation, they're at a big di disadvantage because that is the point where Yates athleticism comes into play even more. Steve Hill to punt at the 17-yard line. Not a deep kick this time, not at all. Let's see if it'll take a Permian bounce. And they need a roll here, and they don't get much of one. Ball is dead at the 41-yard line with 5.49 to go in the second quarter. Best field position to start a drive in this entire game so far. Until this possession, which starts at about the Yates 41-yard line, nobody had started a drive outside their own 34. Luther Booker. In year number 15 is the head coach at Yates. He told me yesterday what we're surprised by so far is nobody's really challenged us except Jesse Jones High School. On the first down play, another good inside move by Johnny Bailey to the 47-yard line. He takes nothing and turns it into something. Mark Gladson, the strong side linebacker, put the hit on it. I'd venture to say Luther Fields challenged right now. Odessa's given Yates. I wonder the last time Yates played this year. We're midway in the second quarter. I wonder the last time they reached midway in the second quarter without a point. I think, uh, what, the, the one or two games where they were challenged by Jones, there was one of those games where they scored only 13 points, and that was their lowest point production of the season. This time it's King out on the right side. Jesse Spruill over there for the Permian Panthers to make the tackle. 211-pound senior. It's going to bring up third down and one. The ball just inside. Permian's into the field. What's surprising in this game is that Price, who's getting very good protection, is not going further downfield with the ball. Last week, they completed eight passes against Holmes for 214 yards, 26.7 yards of completion. And so far, all we've really seen is a lot of the dump-off variety passes. And neither team have any luck with third down conversions. Johnny Bailey, first down to the 40-yard line of Permian. And he is uh, far and away the leading rusher in the ball game <laughs> for, for both sides. Blake Bat, the rover, made the tackle. The, the uh, linebacker for Odessa Permian comes flying through that Salcedo. They just let him come on a trap, and they run outside of it. Big but game, Bailey. Bailey reminds me of those USC tailbacks. I'm sure USC will ask about him. They always ask about everybody else who can I run know. the football. I'm sure they've, they've seen film on him. Lawrence King. Takes it back to the inside, down to about the 37-yard line. The defensive end, Troy Baker, came up with a stop. Been in on a lot of defensive tackles uh, so far here in the first half of play. It, it just amazes me every time I see 62 LeClaire playing at 161 pounds amongst all these tall trees. All right, can Yates take it in and take the lead? 3.50 to go in the quarter. Wide open. Smith. 25-20, out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Quinton Smith made the catch. The right corner, Robert Williams, made the stop on uh, Smith, but there he comes back to the huddle, number 83. Remember, he was open earlier for what would have been a sure touchdown. A missed tackle here, something Permian seldom does, really is going to come back to haunt him. The, the defensive back, Alman had the line on Smith at about the 27. That's a big 15 extra yards that Smith got. Good shoestring tackle, or Bailey might have gone. There was nobody back there. No might have. He was gone. If they don't get Bailey at the line of scrimmage, there wasn't anybody else home. They were bringing the linebackers and doubling the wides. There was no safety back there to make the tackle. It was Patrick Wilson, number 35, who saved the touchdown with that anchor tackle at the 12-yard line. Second down, nine yards to go. Yates threatening for the second time in the game. They missed a 29-yard field goal earlier in this quarter. Price back to throw. For Smith, off his hand, a bit overthrown in the end zone. It really does surprise me that Yates hasn't done more of the option play in this game. They worked it once early going right, which would be the direction they'd run it here to the wide side, and it worked for over 10 yards with Bailey. This is a good spot for the option. You could string Permian out at this point, but then again, when you look back at the passes they've thrown down here, the receivers were open. Have been open. Third down, nine yards to go at the 12-yard line of Odessa Permian. 
Still no score in the game. Late second quarter. Price looking right. Sends out four receivers. Too long. Incomplete in the end zone. Again, Yates will probably have to settle for a field goal attempt. Well, Price, as you pointed out, Norm, is getting the receivers open, but he's just not finding the mark. Here comes a couple of people for Yates, but I don't know if, yeah, they brought the shoe on for yeah. Smith. That's the key. There's Smith uh, kneeling right now and getting ready for the field goal try. Let's see, this one about the same distance as before. Uh, he does not have much of an angle to work with, and Yates will take a timeout here. They want to talk things over before this field goal try. One of the problems of your split end being your kicker, you got to get his shoe on, and by the time you change shoes, you got to take a timeout. Okay, let's pause for a moment here at Texas Stadium in Irving. Three minutes, four seconds to go. Second quarter, we'll find out what happens when we come back right after we pause for this. If how cold a big country winter can get, that's why it's important to buy clothes that are long lasting, of good quality, and at a reasonable price. Abilene Army Surplus provides the outdoor working person with everything he or she could want to keep warm and protected. Boots, coveralls, thermals, socks, hard hat liners, glove liners, slickers, coats, toboggans, and much more. So remember, Abilene Army Surplus, 3005 South First. Let them keep you warm this winter. <laughs> Enter the realm of car fidelity excellence from Abilene Auto Audio. Sony compact disc players and Sony car stereos. Once you experience it, everything else becomes a compromise. Abilene Auto Audio, South 14th across from McMurray. Join the revolution today. All right, Yates is trying to break the ice here with a what will be, again, a 29-yard field goal try. Smith missed one earlier. The teams are lined up. Let's see if he can get it this time, and you can see he's got a bad angle. Ball is down. It's a booming kick, and this time he has got it. So Smith connects, and we finally get some points on the board here at Texas Stadium with three minutes and one second to go. In the second period, Smith connects on a 29-yard field goal, and it's three to nothing, Yates. But it has taken them a long time to get there. So far, Yates has pretty well controlled the first 21 minutes of the game and has but three points to show for it. Now the pressure starts to subtly shift to the other direction. Permian has not been across midfield. They've got to start proving to Yates that they can threaten their defense. They haven't done it so far, and in fact, hardly anybody around the state has done it this year. Can you imagine playing 15 5A schools and allowing 5.1 points per game? That's outrageous. That's, uh, that's so far and away an outrageous statistic that you call and you ask, listen, <laughs> is this, this a right? typo? <laughs> Actually, Permian's defense isn't far behind that. They're averaging, what, they're giving up 5.9 per game. Two, well, you can see, you come in with two offenses averaging Permian around 33, uh, Yates around 41, and what you wind up with a 3 nothing game 18 minutes into it. <laughs> yeah, the defenses on these two teams are pretty good. They sure are. All right, here's the kickoff. And it'll be taken by number 14 for Permian, Scott Irwin. Irwin back to the 27, maybe the 28-yard line. So let's see if uh, Permian opens it up here on first down. If they're going to open it up, the one player to open up their offense is the wide receiver, Greg Anderson. He caught 65 balls this year. He caught 70 last year. Another bit of warning here. Talked to John Wilkins yesterday. He has a trick play. A wide receiver around with Anderson, and Anderson can throw the football. He started out as a quarterback. Ooh, see a little change in lineup already. Double wide receivers right for Permian. That's Lauterbach at the top of the screen in the slot. But they were given instead to Marcus Lott. And with Yates softening up defensively a little bit to look out for the pass, Permian picks up some yardage, but there is a flag down back near the line of scrimmage, and the Panthers are already backing up, and here's the indication holding against Odessa Permian. Ooh, tough penalty here to take now. 
you got some decisions to make philosophically if you're perming. It's first down, you're back in your own territory, first and long, there's only 2.50 to go on the clock. Permian would probably just as soon get this half over with and be down 3 nothing from this spot on the field. They're going to get the ball to start the second half. Don't expect Permian, which lives on being smart, not on being big and tough. Don't expect them to do anything stupid here. It would really surprise me if Permian didn't simply run the ball three times here, grind this clock down under a minute, and say, hey, take it back, let's get this half over with down 20 yards to go and they do keep it on the ground cider on the draw play and he loses another couple of yards maurice hobson the 225 pound left tackle with a big hit and that's exactly what permian is doing norm 217 216 yates still has two timeouts left permian has not used one in the first half imagine imagine the status of maurice hobson when he comes back next year to yates he's the only returning starter 21 other guys. The other 10 guys you see on defense and all 11 offensive players all graduate. If he's not named a team captain, I, he'll be upset. <laughs> Second down and long. Again, it's on the ground. Bryant wrapped up just as he gets the handoff near the 14-yard line. Chris Gardner and Greg Garrett with some sure-handed tackling on Bryant at the 14, and Permian is going backwards. And now Yates is going to take a timeout. And that's a smart move on the Houston schools park with a minute 39 to go in the second quarter. Uh, they want to get the ball back. This is senior defensive tackle Garrett gets hit and then bumped by two other people, sheds everything and gets right in on the ball carrier. You know, Garrett's an example of a kid who may not get a major college offer, but he'll go someplace and play. Just about everybody you see on the field from Yates today will play somewhere next year. That's unlike Odessa. Please, nothing against these people, but there aren't a lot of people breaking down the doors of 161-pound defensive linemen. As opposed to Yates, there are some marvelous athletes here, but you're seeing the two types of football teams that Texas produces. Inner city, struggle financially, great athletes against suburban, money, well coached, tremendous discipline, wonderful facilities. And funny, isn't it, how often, Ray, the final game matches teams like this? Well, I must admit, Norm, I've never heard Odessa described as suburban, but uh, <laughs> Dallas Fort Worth is getting bigger all the time, though, so maybe. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're the outside of it or they're going toward El Paso. Third down at 24 yards to go, and the ball is in the air, incomplete at the 20-yard line. It was tipped and very nearly picked off by the Yates Lions. Number 63, Kenneth Payne, almost got the deflection. Oh, mistake here. Mistake here by Yates. I mean a major mistake by Yates. You're going to see Lauterbach make a great play here for Permian. Watch him come in after this play and knock the per the interceptor off the ball. The mistake by Yates, the defensive back called a timeout when he didn't have to. It was a knee-jerk reaction. He, w he had been instructed, hey, after this play, get us a timeout to stop the clock, and he did anyway, and it just didn't occur to him in that split second, hey, the, inter the, the broken up pass stops the clock That's anyway. Right. That takes Yates out of timeouts now with 1.32 to go. So it'll be fourth down at the 14-yard line. And uh, Yates is still going to get good field position. And remember, Norm, in the high school game, uh, every time you pick up a first down, they stop the clock to move the chains. And that gives the team plenty of time to get a play called and set in from the bench. So Yates still has a lot of time to work with once they get the football back. But cannot stop the clock ever with the timeout for the rest of the set. Hill at the three-yard line. Mm -hmm. He needs a good kick. Is now angling left, and it takes a Yates bounce, and Permian downs the ball at the 38-yard line. The ball was punched back in the other end of the field, but it was touched by an Odessa Permian player at the 38-yard line. Here, one more thing that worked slightly against Yates there. That ball, once it's just tapped, can be picked up still by the receiving team and run. 
the fact that it was not picked up and was allowed to roll dead, look at the amount of time went off the clock. 15 seconds another, another for the 15. punt. So 117 to go second quarter, but nevertheless, Yates has great field position at the 38-yard line of Odessa Permian. They have moved the ball extremely well on their last two possessions, missing a 29-yard field goal the first time down there and connecting on a 29-yarder the second time. 3-0 score. Price, near side, caught by Lawrence King. He's down to the 27-yard line. And as you pointed out, Ray, the stoppage of the clock to move the chains gives Yates a chance right. to organize their offense. Now look at Price taking advantage of the stoppage. He's hollering out his signals. Everybody knows the play. And now the clock will move again. 107 to go in the quarter. Price, lots of time. Goes to the end zone. To Zito Alexander, great catch. Touchdown by the rangy tight end for the Houston Yates Lions. That'll be a 27-yard touchdown toss. And Price had all the time in the world to get the pass away. Robert Williams was trying to cover back there. In fact, they had double coverage. They had the nickel defense in there, Anderson and Williams, but Zeno Alexander, the rangy tight end who is basically uh, interchangeable with wide receiver and tight end, was split out that time, and he comes up with a catch. The extra point by Smith. Ooh, and it's not a very good kick, and it wobbles off to the right side, no good. So, with a minute, one second to go in the first half, it's nine to nothing, Houston Yates. This young man, Zeno Alexander for Houston Yates, is a six foot two, 212 pound tight end, and look at the look at athletic that. ability of Alexander. That ball was not, nothing against Charles Price, Price, not exactly perfectly thrown. Alexander had to come back and catch a ball that was back over his outside shoulder while he's backpedaling with two people on him. Yates, in the last six minutes of the first half, has not only taken control of the game, they had that fairly much all along. They now have control of the scoreboard. If there's an area that Zeno Alexander needs to work on and show some improvement on, we were told, it's his blocking. Well, but when you catch the ball like that, <laughs> hey, what difference does it make? Nobody ever rushes up after the game, yeah. throws her arm around you and kisses you and says, great blocking, honey. Uh -uh. <laughs> now, now that catch, somebody will rush up to Zeno after the game and say, nice catch, Zeno. <laughs> hey, hey, if you had, in, in baseball, right, how much did you work on your field and as much as your hit? Nah, I you work on either one very you well. You work on hit. Fact, in no. football, if you're a tight end, right. you work on catch. <laughs> <laughs> the kickoff by Smith. And the ball will be down at the 12-yard line. Anderson's knee was on the turf when he picked the ball up. It'll be marked at the 14-yard line, but you see the official right on top of the play. The referee picked it up, and there is Anderson who's having a tough time so far in the game. Let's look. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. Norm. No, 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 no. See, no. Well, he, he didn't, didn't have control possession. the ball. That's right. See? He did not have possession of the football. You can go down to the ground and stop the football. The rule is if you are in possession of the ball with a knee on the ground. So Anderson had a right to say he could get up there. By the way, Alexander this year, 29 catches, five of them for touchdowns. 390 yards, pretty usable tight end for a guy who doesn't supposed to get the ball much. That's right. All right, Harrington, first down. This time he's got some blocking, and he finds Anderson, and Anderson is to the 30-yard line. That's a pickup of 16 yards. Let's go down quickly to Jay Hendricks on the Permian sideline. Jay? Something you might put in your brain and think about now. In the playoffs, Permian has not been behind at any time at the half. Here it is, 9 to nothing now. Permian hasn't seen this. They do come back the second half, though, and usually be explosive, but they have not been behind at all, and looks like they're going to try and put something down, maybe put some points on and not be behind, or at least get somewhat close before they go into the half. Back to you guys. Well, and a good point here about Permian. They have not scored many points in the first quarter this year. They've scored most of their points in the second and third quarters. So they are a good third quarter football team. Anderson, great catch at the 49 yard line. And there's a flag down as Anderson is tackled by Greg Eaglin, the safety. But Anderson, as we told you at the start of the football game, is the receiver that Harrington invariably looks for in the tight situations. We've got a penalty here against Yates. Now this works for Odessa Permian because they get to talk over 
they get to talk over the situation here. Here's the wide receiver. Anderson, everybody in the world is attracted to Anderson. He starts out with a back on him. No, no, we're going to get some safety help in here. Here's the safety help. There's a linebacker in front, and he still catches the ball. That was what amounted to a zone with three men around Anderson, and Harrington did a great job of getting it to him. First down, 50-yard line, 21 seconds to go in the quarter. Perrion still has three timeouts. They haven't used any of them. They try a flea flicker here. Anderson, wobbly pass, and it's incomplete down at the 25-yard line with 11 seconds remaining in the first half. Now let's go down to Jay Hendricks again. Jay? Army team that a lot of people see. They're now moving the ball. The defense is going, or the offensive line is giving them some time to throw, and you'll see Greg Anderson making some catches. There they try the flea flicker. They'll work it once or twice. Just wait. Greg Anderson's going to show you some stuff. All right? Okay, Norm, uh, with only 11 seconds left, though, they've got the three timeouts, but that doesn't help them. I don't know why they didn't call a timeout there. You're right. And save themselves about six or seven seconds. That was a double forward half pass, by the way, against Pervian. Yes. The ball was thrown first Harrington to Anderson. That's, that's what the penalty is. Yates, of course, will take it. And so that will rub it out. Well, Anderson at first couldn't find the, couldn't find the receiver, had a notion to run. And as you have alertly pointed out, he crossed the, uh, the line of scrimmage. <laughs> i tell you what, I'll tell you why he had the notion to run. The hot breath of about three <laughs> eights guys on him. He said, I believe I'm going to move around here a little bit. <laughs> Melvin Foster was after me. I'd throw the ball, too. <laughs> Anywhere. First down, 15 to go. 11 seconds remaining in the half. Harrington in trouble. Harrington will try to get out of bounds. He may not have made it. No. I believe his knee touched down before he went out of play. Two seconds, one second. The clock shows no time remaining in the first half. And that will do it. So he did not get out of play. So the first half draws to a close here at Texas Stadium in Irving. The Houston Yates Lions have jumped out to a 9 to nothing lead over the Panthers of Odessa Permian. And we will have our halftime activities coming up for you right after we pause for these messages. Basically, the interpretation is it has something to do with mystical power. Well, if you look at their record, they've got something. It may, it may not be mystical power, but they've got something. <laughs> well, they'll have to draw on it here in the second half, trailing nine to nothing. It is we're, very we're ready important. To go. Very important. Odessa takes this opening kickoff and moves it, flipping that coin over. If Yates can kick off, stop Odessa, and get the ball back, momentum continues in their favor. It was running their way to end the half. Anderson takes the ball at the two-yard line, back to the 10, up to the 15, 20, and Anderson is tripped up at the 25, or he might have gotten a lot more out of the kickoff return. Last week, uh, against Cyfair, Permian came out to start the second half, and they put together a beautiful drive to get back in that football game. And as we said earlier, they've scored a lot of points in the third quarter this year. And the uh, telling story, I think, is, is going to be here in the next seven or eight minutes. The telling player may be Anderson. He got loose for a couple of catches at the end of the first half. Don't be surprised if immediately Permian throws the ball trying to find Anderson again. Jason Harrington, the quarterback, as they shift the tight end to the near side. And they will run it. Bryant. Bryant cannot get outside. They have not been able to do that all afternoon. Quick pursuing linemen and linebackers. Number 66, Marvin Foster, the 220-pound senior who uh, brushed off the block by Scott Russell. And they bring down Bryant for no game. Here is Melvin Foster. 220 pounds, an all-stater, tremendous range and speed, runs a 4.740, started as a sophomore against Converse Judson in that wonderful playoff game, rated by the Fort Worth Tel Star-Telegram, one of the 10 best players in the state. Second down, 10 yards to go. Harrington, play-action fake. He's looking for Lauterbach. Now sees Anderson over the middle. The pass is intercepted, then dropped. Now, I believe that Yates will get possession of the ball. Yes. He had it long enough that it fell out of his hands, and Foster came up with it. And it will be Yates football at the 45-yard line as Harrington threw into heavy traffic. There were nothing but red shirts there, and the Lions have got a great opportunity here. Odessa going to the sprint out to try to relieve the pressure a little bit, sprinting Harrington toward the sideline to buy a little time. Good, good cup blocking, and Harrington 
Who was the receiver? Anderson was banged around a little bit. Foster intercepted it, turned to run upfield, and dropped it. And here come the line. And the throw is incomplete, intended for Lawrence King coming out of the backfield over the middle as the Yates Lions are going for the kill here early in the third quarter. Your Yates offensive lineup, Price, Bailey, King, Smith, Lampkins, and the touchdown scorer, Zeno Anderson, in the offensive line. They've got a moon in the middle. Good tackles and good, quick, pretty big guards for high school, both over 200. Second down, 10 yards to go. Bailey and King, the setback. To give this to Bailey, he's to the 41-yard line. Game's about four on the play. Patrick Wilson making the tackle for the Permian defense. Here is a look at the defense for Permian. Ray Brown starting in place of Louis Salcedo, who has a back problem in the line for Permian. The linebacker Cervantes is the best good quick people on the outside of the defensive secondary, heightened by the presence of Robert Williams. Some pressure on the Permian defense. Third down. Price wings it out. Nice diving catch by Alexander for a first down at the 29-yard line. Oh, my. That's the tight end, but it's the tight end split out here. They had the tight end away from the line. Now, again, remember the adjustment on the touchdown pass? Watch the adjustment here. A ball thrown behind him, and Alexander makes another acrobatic play. He's done that before, hasn't he? <laughs> Caught a lot of those on the playground. 10-16 to go, third quarter. Here comes Bailey, 20. Bailey to the 15. And the Yates Lions are picking up big chunks of yardage. Darren Allman, the safety man, probably saving a touchdown there with his stop on Bailey, but it's another first down. What haven't we seen from the Yates today? Turnover. I can't think of anything mistakes. Yeah, except mistakes. No 15-yard penalties. No fumbles lost. No interceptions. No bad snaps. The closest thing uh, to mistakes would have been the uh, incomplete passes there in the first half. But they've corrected that, too. Here comes Bailey, and he will score. He start, high steps his way into the end zone for the touchdown. It's a 14-yard run by Johnny Bailey. the feeling Permian's in some trouble. And they indeed are with 9.54 to go in the third quarter. It was 9 nothing at the half, now 15 zip. We've got a long way to go, but Yates has totally dominated the game since early in the second quarter. If you're going to start thinking like a Permian fan, first of all, Ruth, this is missed. It isn't, but realize there is a two-point conversion in high school. Two touches, two two-pointers ties this. Okay, he gets the extra point. Quentin Smith does, and it's now 16-0. And we will take a break. And we will return with more of the 1985 5A Championship from Texas Stadium after these words. <laughs> 45 yards and six plays, and it only took him a minute, 14 seconds to do it. Bailey with the most of the yardage. He is now over 100 yards for the day. 11 carries, 106 yards, one, two, three missed tackles, four missed tackles. That's not a Permian type of, of tackling situation. But again, good runners will cause good tacklers to miss. So with 9.54 to go in the third period, Permian really has its back to the wall now. And Smith kicks off. Line drive, and it is fumbled by Lauterbach. He picks it up at the six. And he comes to the near side, out of bounds at the 16-yard line. So, as has been the case all afternoon, Permian has just no field position at all to work with. Reginald Briggs made the tackle over there on Lauterbach, who will stay in the game at the wingback position. What usually gives you field position is the other team's mistakes. Yates has not made any mistakes. They have not punted badly, fumbled the ball, turned it over. They've done a marvelous job of sealing Permian back in their territory. Permian has not started a drive outside their 30 today. It's tough to go 70 yards against Yates. Jason Harrington, 21 touchdown passes on the air, but he's not had any luck throwing the ball this afternoon, nor has Permian had much uh, success running either. Larry Gill making the tackle on the first down carry by Marcus Lott. 1171 yards rushing coming into the game today, but the Permian offense has been stymied. You're going to see Melvin Foster shed two blockers, bang the runner. Foster has a phrase, ace say, 
A-C-E-S-A-Y. He hollers it after every tackle. Ace thing. Second down, seven yards to go at the 19. And this time it'll be Sider. Sider to the 26-yard line. Greg Eaglin up from his safety position to make the stop. You may be starting to say to yourself, gee, why doesn't Permian start throwing the ball? Well, to throw the ball, you have to establish the ability or the threat to run. When Yates started to run the ball well is after they started throwing the ball well. You have to get something working before something else starts working. Now, Hermian's nudged it out of there a little bit. Moved it out over the 25-yard line. Don't be surprised if after the two running plays inside, they now go off a play action to throw the ball to Anderson. Well, Anderson has been the big play threat for Permian all season. Made some clutch catches last week in the win over Cypher. And as you saw, Anderson, number 11, splits to the left side this time. And Anderson is going to go across the middle. They're looking for him. He's out there. He's got it. Anderson trying to cut back and elude the defender. He is down at the 49-yard line. And it's a big game for the Permian Panthers, and they certainly need it. Well, honestly, didn't have their phones tapped. That's exactly <laughs> what they did. They play action after the two runs. Anderson splits the two people at the line of scrimmage. Notice the linebacker Foster deep in coverage. Anderson cuts down inside the other safety and gets necktied right here. Holy cow. Forget getting him any 15-34s for Christmas. It's now a 13-34 shirt. 8.23 to go in the third period. Harrington sets his offense. Anderson split near side. And it's a high lob toss. And Anderson catches it, but he is out of play. So it'll be incomplete. You have just called the play-by-play -play of the first snap today of Fermian snapping the ball in Yates territory. You're right. And how long has it been since uh, Permian was shut out of the other team's half of the field in the first 24 minutes? Much less no points, not even across midfield. Yeah, nothing. Hey, no, no shots. Is Anderson a good player? He is a super little player. But somebody's going to steal him. Okay, Anderson out to the near side. That's Lauterbach in the slot. Harrington going to the air again, starting to limber up his arm. Underthrown intended for Anderson, and it is trapped at the 38-yard line by Big Melvin. We should tell you that Harrington did not start the year as the quarterback on this club. The starting quarterback was a youngster named Rich Fletcher. That's right. On the Permian Club, Fletcher got hurt early in the year. Harrington stepped in, another senior like Fletcher, and moved in and has kept the job. I'll tell you something about uh, Harrington. You know, when, when you look at touchdown passes thrown by quarterbacks, the, the offsetting thing you have to look at is how many interceptions have they thrown, the INT category. Well, Harrington's got 21 touchdown passes. He's only thrown four interceptions. He fumbles the football, and I believe Yates may have come up with it down at the 43-yard line. The ball is stripped away. And it is Yates football at the 43-yard line. Larry Gill, number 50, coming out of there with it. So with 8.04 to go in the third quarter, we will take a break here at Texas Stadium in Irving as the 5A championship game continues and the Yates Lions are on top, 16 to nothing. Back with you for the remainder of the football game today. Ray Gaskin, Norm Hitzkus, along with Jay Hendricks and Tony Theriot, our sideline reporters. We'll be checking in with them again as the game progresses. It's first down at the 44-yard line. Bailey, who... Ran it in from 15 yards out a minute ago. Takes it down to about the 34-yard line. During the timeout, as you follow the Yates people back to their huddle, you could see the emotion in the Yates huddle. They were clapping. They were happy. They were up. They're getting the feel of this game. This club has been denied so many times. In the last four years, this club has at various times been rated the best in the state just about every one of those four years and has never won it. And, and they're... That monkey gets off the back slowly, but it's getting off. It sure is. Price gets it off. Here comes Bailey again. 30, Bailey 20. Great cut back. He's fall down at the 12-yard line. Bailey is just piling it up now. Jerry LeClaire, the 161-pound right defensive end, made the tackle on Bailey, or it would have been another six points for Johnny. Just take a look at the grace, the moves of Bailey. Oh, cut my. back, cut right. Now he's thinking touchdown. 
Cut left. Put a little limp leg on. Cut left. Move and look at way downfield. That's that's Leclerc. Leclerc, the defensive tackle, 30 yards downfield, making the play. Yates is trying to put it away with seven minutes to go. We're still in the third quarter, but they are already up 16-0. And they will get another six points. Lawrence King, number 33, from 12 yards out. And Yates is blowing it wide open now as the Lions get another touchdown, their third of the football game, and that increases the score to 22 to nothing. Don't expect Yates to slow down. They've waited for this moment for so long. Don't expect that they'll go into a shell and say, well, let's just run a clock down now. They don't know how to do that. No, no, they don't know how to do it. <laughs> this club will continue to pour it on, not with any intent to run up a score, but this club will continue to move the football, and they really have it rolling momentum-wise now. Well, they have never won the state championship. They have been close many times, but it's beginning to look like they're going to take it this afternoon. King, little quick trap, right up the middle. Breaks the tackle, breaks another. Chief Permian's had a lot of tackles broken this afternoon. That'll happen because of the psychology of the game, not necessarily the physiology of the game. Permian, a team not used to getting beaten up, is being beaten up pretty severely right now, both on the score for, scoreboard and psychologically by a Yates team that's rolling. I'll tell you who Bailey reminds me of, Anthony Davis. You know, when you talk about the Southern Cal tailbacks, Anthony Davis was about 5'7", 5'8", uh, squat, but very fast, extremely quick, and they had the great moves. And, well, we've seen what Bailey's got. Okay, let's go down to the sidelines quickly to Jay Hendricks. Jay? I, I can tell you this much for sure. Permian is just not used to being down like this. They've been stunned. They've been hit hard. They've got a couple of injuries. I do know for sure that Greg DeMarco will not come back in the ballgame today. Of course, Luis Salcedo is playing sore. This team is just banged up, and they're not used to this happening, and I think they're down. And uh, who knows what the outcome will be. Maybe they can snap back up as far as Permian fans are concerned. Back to you guys. Okay, and that is a good point. Permian's had a lot of injury problems this year, but they've been able to overcome them up until this year game as Lauterbach returns out to the 27-yard line, and it's uh, Byron Moore, along with James Goo, to make the tackle for the Yates Lions. But that trend of Permian never starting outside their 30-yard line continues. Notice the scoring drives for oh Yates. Oh, my, it's not taking them any time at all. No, one of them took 114, <laughs> one of them took 112. This club gets it rolling and just goes. Now the problem for Permian is Yates is going to ignore the run. And they'll just yep. come flying at Jason Harrington. Well, Harrington is a 55% passer, 1,311 yards on the season, but he hasn't faced a pass rush like he's been up against today. Screen pass out on the far side to Lauterbach. Yates had it well diagnosed, and Lauterbach gets back nearly to the line of scrimmage, but we may have a face mask here, as you saw the penalty flags thrown. I don't know if they're going to call face or grabbing the helmet and using it to bring them down, the edge of the helmet. But it's definitely against the defensive team of Yates for some kind of penalty, either face mask or illegal roughness. Let's see what Marvin there it is, Tanner. face mask. It is face. Indicated by the referee. Let's see if we can pick it up, Norm. The left hand. Right there. Yes. Ooh, my. Ooh, boy. Fortunate that wasn't more than a five yarder because he tugged the helmet. Certainly appreciate the fine job being done by our crew this afternoon. Bringing you the football game. Got to put in a good word for my friend and spotter, Les Palmer, with Money Financial Services. Les has got money? <laughs> well, let me put it this way. He brought the sack lunch for both of us today. <laughs> I don't know what don't know what that really tells you, but uh, he's got more than I've got. Harrington keeps it on the ground. Sider is hit, fumbles the ball. Permian will retain possession at the 37-yard line. Permian's just, just not had. The last man getting up here is Foster. Now there's a reason he's the last man up. He leaps the guard, surrounds the carrier, oh. knocks the ball out. Did you see the move by Foster? He never got touched. The guard tried to cut him, and Foster said, Hey, baby, I've seen that move before. Foster's one of those kind of players, if he was down there in Class A someplace, he'd be fullback probably on offense. Harrington 
to the 40. Harrington has the first down at the 41-yard line. 5.38 to go in the third quarter as the tackle is made by Maurice Hobson, number 79. Harrington goes back to the huddle. If you listen to the scouts, Foster can be anything he wants to be. <laughs> I'm sure he can. Harrington, again, is not a scrambler. He's a young man that doesn't have a lot of foot speed. He is a very good, sound, accurate passer, generally in non-passing situations, but a good job of scrambling out there. First down, 41-yard line. Permian has not mounted an offensive threat today. Harrington back to throw. He's got a lot of time here. He finds Anderson, and Anderson may have another first down at the 48-yard line. I believe he does. Looks like they'll give him forward progress to the 47th, and it will be another Panther first and 10. James Christian made the tackle on Anderson, number 11. Little guy weighs in at about 160, but he is cat quick. Watch the move here. Double teamed again. Anderson slides out. Now he's just looking for an open space to help Harrington out. Watch the good move of the receiver angling back toward the football. And then the twist move, trying to get the extra yard. Anderson is listed on the roster at 160, Norm, but I don't believe he weighs that. I think he's smaller than that. Harrington rolling. He'll keep. He's a blocker. He's got some people out there. Nope, he can't get outside. Still picks up about five yards. Stopped at the 42-yard line with 439 to go in the third quarter. And Houston Yates leading by a score of 23 to nothing. Of course, remember, in high school football, it's a little early for us to talk about this, I know, but you do have the two-point conversion option available to you in a high school game. And 23 points for the underdog is still three scores and three two-pointers. That's, that's the true. way to think of it. And that's exactly, that's the only way the several thousand fans on the Permian side can look at it at this point. They've got a long way to go, though, to be in a position to win the football game and time is against them and so is that Houston Yates football team. Second down, six to go at the 43. Harrington gives to Sider. Sider looking for a block. Pretty hard running there by Sider. He's got another first down. This is Permian's deepest penetration there at the 35 of Yates. And now I wonder, as uh, Greg England made the tackle on Sider, Norm, is, is Yates softening up a little bit? Are they relaxing? Well, they might be celebrating a little early. 23 is fairly safe quite frankly, and it still looks fairly safe. But if you're Permian, oh, you can't get 23 on this drive. You've got to get six, then you got to get two, then you got to hold, then you got to get six, then you got to get two. Now, anybody else in the world you'd think, oh, baloney. Permian never starts thinking it's going to lose. And even though they're down 23 nothing, they still have another quarter of football to go. Harrington is not able to get away. They had him back to 43. He managed to stumble forward to the 40 before Larry Gill made the tackle. Also there, number 51, Chris Gardner, and Melvin Foster, number 66, who is always there. You're going to see Good get down on the bottom of the pile here. He was blocked down and then that got to his knee and just lurched over and got into the path of Harrington. Yates is an active, sound football team playing now with some confidence. About time for Harrington to look for Anderson again. Back to throw, four-man rush, and they are blowing in there on him this time. He sacked for a big loss back at the 47-yard line. James Good, Kenneth Payne there to make the tackle, and when you look at the roster for Houston Yates and you look at the linemen and linebackers, you see nothing but players who weigh 200 and more. They're just coming at Harrington. See, they really don't care if they get burned once here because they maybe get burned once, but they'll make five plays doing this. Now, Permian almost can't burn them. The yardage is so long that Yates can come flying at him again. Don't be surprised if Yates just comes right back with the blitz again. Well, if there were any trick plays in the bag of Coach John Wilkins of Permian, it would be a good time to use it. They'll just stay with something basic here. And again, Harrington can't get the time to set up and look for Anderson. He's dropped at the 48-yard line, and the Panthers, after moving it down to the 35, went backwards, and it'll be fourth down at the 48. Chris Gardner, Melvin Foster, the big play man again, as Foster will go to the sidelines. The Yates defense nicknamed itself the Crush Grooves. The Crush Grooves. The Crush Grooves, coordinated by Ronald Miller. And the Crush Grooves have been in a groove today. Hill the punt at the 40. High kick. 
fair catch called for. Bailey takes it at the 22-yard line. Very short kick by the Panthers with a minute 22 to go in the third quarter, and Yates dominating 23 to nothing. You're starting to get to miracle land for Odessa. That's about it at this point. They really needed to go down and score on that possession because we're down to the final minute 22 of the third quarter and as you said even under the best of circumstances they'd have to score three touchdowns to get the two point conversions to pull this thing out. Gates would have to help. And that's right. At this point they're going to have to make some mistakes if Odessa's going to have a chance. Which they have not done today. On first down it's Lawrence King. Good compliment to Johnny Bailey in the backfield. Bailey is the the game breaker but King can hurt you too. King with this game will be around 850 yards now on the season. He has nine touchdowns. Bailey has 12 for the year and they don't those aren't the only two. There are kids like Gary Williams Crawford Fisher who haven't played for Yates today who are dynamite running backs. It's just that Bailey and King are you know a tenth of a point better. Price hands off to Bailey. Good work by the Permian defense this time. Now there's a late flag thrown. And the boos are coming from the Permian side. So they're anticipating a, a penalty going against the young men in the white shirts. Oh, my, it's another personal foul. You know, that's the second personal foul against Permian today in the scene center for the telecast today. We mentioned the fact that last week it was Yates who got five personal fouls in the victory over San Antonio Holmes but Norm this afternoon it's the, the mistakes and the penalties are going the other way Odessa was going to have to play a mistake free game and feast on Yates mistakes it has been just the other way around Yates hasn't needed much help basically but they've gotten some first and 10 43 yard line 34 seconds to go in the period option play Bailey he turns the corner gets about eight they had him cut off at the uh, pass, so to speak. It was uh, Robert Williams, the quarterback, who came up quickly. But again, excellent athletic, sheer athletic uh, ability by Bailey gets him almost eight yards. You mentioned Davis as the person Bailey reminds you of. He reminds really me, does. He reminds me of Reggie Dupard, almost the identical size, 5'11 or so, 180, with that same little rolling hip move. That, that miss, makes so many tacklers miss. Okay, that is the end of the third quarter of play. The Panther <laughs> exhorting the players out on the field to mount a comeback, and it will take a monumental comeback for Permian to catch Yates. Let's pause for these messages. Back with you for the fourth quarter of action, Ray Gaskin, Norm Hitchkiss, and our sideline reporters, Jay Hendricks and Tony Therio. 23 to nothing, Houston Yates leading. And after a standoff in the first quarter, Yates started to take command of the game in the second period. They led 9-0 at the half, and it's been all Yates in the second half of play. Price on the option, keeping down to the 40-yard line, and he's got a first down. Let's go down to Jay Hendricks now for another report. Jay? If you can see behind me, the Permian crowd is really kind of stunned somewhat. They're not used to something like this. You see a zero on their side. You see 23 points on the other side. You don't see that very often. This, this side is down somewhat, and I think that affects on the team as well. They are down, and uh, they played a tough ball game, but they just aren't doing the things that they need to do, and, and, and that's hurt them somewhat. But they're a proud team. They'll come out of it with their heads up, but nonetheless, they have played really a good ball game. It's just tough to go against a team like Houston Yates. Back to you guys. Price throws the pass is intercepted and Permian has needed a break back to the 40 yard line Darren Allman with the interception from his safety position and that's the first time in the ball game that Permian has come up with a really big defensive play. Well we talked about the fact that if there was to be a mojo miracle in this game Yates would have to give the miracle some help. Well here's a little help right into the safety's hands. Price had the receiver he thought open. What he didn't read was the safety sitting back in a double zone. The safety just playing center field against that side of the field. Now, if you're Permian, though, you've got to score, but you've got to score quickly. That's right. 11-28 left in the ball game. So Permian has it at the Yates 40-yard line. Jason Harrington all the way at quarterback today. 
that lob pass looking for Anderson and it is incomplete at the 15 yard line that one on one coverage out there and he was trying to lob it over the defensive back James Christian's head Anderson got a hand on it as often as not that's that's about all he needs but this time he doesn't make the catch here are the stats after the third quarter look at the disparity in the rushing yardage in this game realize Permian usually gets per game 226 yards and gives up 133. Normally we would say highly unofficial stats, but Stan Hovatter is keeping the stats for us today, and he is one of the best. Well, take another three yards away from Permian on the ground, Stanley. Down to 33 yards rushing now in the game. Sider losing three, the tackle made by Kenneth Payne. Just for the sake of it, I'm going to ask Stan to total the number of running plays for Odessa in the game. The number of rushing plays for Odessa in the game. Okay, at the 43-yard line. Third down and 12 yards to go. And Harrington needs to connect here. Play action fake. Rushes on. He's rolling right. He looks. He throws. Anderson juggling. Is it a catch? Yes! It's a catch at the 30-yard line. And was a great effort by Anderson. He was trying to stay in bounds. Of course, in high school football, you only have to have one foot in bounds for it to be a, a legal catch. James Christian was all over him defensively. Let's have another look at this, Norm. This is a great bit of concentration by Anderson. Harrington rolls away from the blitz of Foster, but look at the play by Anderson. Now watch the ball. To catch the ball, he has it. And the foot was just dragging. Now he's going to be a little bit short. It sets up fourth and one. I've got the play for it. it well, is they've got the first down, yeah. Oh, the guy hadn't turned his sheet over when I saw it. I looked down and I saw four, but it, it is the first down. Again, if you're Odessa, you got to crank it up and score quickly here. Well, don't, be, don't be surprised if, if they go end zone from this area. What really bugs me now is I don't get to find out what the play was going to be. But maybe you can... I didn't go on play action later. and hoist it up fourth and a foot. <laughs> First down, 30-yard line. Permian in desperate straits. They've got to score on this possession. Sider hit. He'll lose a yard or two. Yeah, I know they want to keep the Yates defense honest. But it, it does it does Odessa very little good if it takes them four minutes to get in the end zone from here. Kenneth Payne and James Good there to wrap up Sider. It'll be second down, 14 yards to go. Right in the game. That's the 28th Odessa rushing play for 29 yards. Mm. And on the passing plays, the only thing that has really worked for them is the rollout where they can avoid that intense rush. Harrington, oops, lost his uh, grip on the football, and he's very lucky that it wasn't intercepted. It's going to bring up third down at 14. Bit of a strange looking pass. It was hard to tell whether Anderson or Lauterbach was the intended receiver. Well, Harrington, nonetheless, is boy, he's had a great season this year. Uh, another uh, young man, as you mentioned earlier, Norm, uh, Rich Fletcher was the starting quarterback. Uh, he got hurt. Harrington was uh, pressed into duty, and what did he do? Well, he led his team right into the state championship football game, and, of course, he got some great support from the other members of the football team. Third down, 14 to go. Harrington, the rush on again. Harrington in trouble. He's sacked at the 40-yard line. They are so cat quick. Larry Gill, 195-pound senior defensive end, there to sack Harrington. And you can bet that uh, Harrington has not seen the kind of pass rush this year that he has seen this afternoon. Odessa has no choice here. They must go for it on fourth down. Fourth and about 20 to go from the 39-yard uh, line, fourth and 19. Yeah, no, no choice here with 9.30 to play and down by 23 points. And the Yates Lions will take time out. So they want to collect their thoughts about defensive strategy, and that gives us an opportunity to pause for a minute with 9.29 remaining in the football game here at Texas Stadium in Irving, the 5A state championship, looking like the crown will go to Houston Yates. Final 9.29 of the state championship football game. Permian Panthers face fourth down and about 21 to go. And if they have any hopes of rallying in this football game, they've got to pull off a miracle. Harrington 
Got some time, scrambling, still didn't have a receiver open. Now throws for Anderson, and there were at least five Yates players in the vicinity. It goes as an incomplete pass, and the ball will go over to Houston Yates. Greg Eaglin and Byron Moore, the safety men, the uh, closest defenders to Anderson. But there was a case, Norm, where I think, you know, you've got to go to what's gotten you there when you're in trouble. Uh, but in, in that particular instance where Harrington just was determined to find Anderson, there, there were five players all over it. Well, that's one of the problems. Nobody else in this club catches a pass per game, and, and Yates can see that, too. They double and triple team the big right. receiver in crucial situations. Price will keep it on the ground. Johnny Bailey, 40-45. Bailey fumbles the football, and the Panthers have come up with it at the 48-yard line. So Odessa is not totally dead yet. 9-14 to go in the game, and the Panthers will take over. Robert Williams with the fumble recovery for Mojo. Robert Williams, the leading interceptor for uh, Permian this year with an eight, comes up with a heads-up recovery here. Bailey looks like he's thinking touch every time. He's making moves. That was just, he's not got the ball securely there. That wasn't anybody's fault but Johnny Bailey's, who didn't put the ball away as he made the cut. First down, 48-yard line of Yates. Harrington will roll right again. This is the side of the field where he's had most of his success throwing, and it's almost intercepted at the 39-yard line. Looking for Lauterbach this time. Let's see, it's number 34, James Christian, who got his hand on the ball defensively. Mr. Christian's played a good game today. I have a hard time finding anybody in the red shirts who hasn't. They have played a good one. I don't know if you've seen what Harrington's been doing. He's been going to the sidelines between plays, then running back into the huddle. Tell you what, he's got to be in some shape <laughs> to run to the sidelines and bring his own play back in. Second down, 10 yards to go. Look out here. You get the feeling Yates is going to start pouring yeah. people into the backfield. And the only way to avoid that is with the roll. And the pass is caught by a lot down at the 41-yard line. But it will not be enough for a first down. Let's go down to the sidelines for another update. Norm Ray, you guys talked about Permian really going with what's carried him this far, and that's really what they're doing right now. They're moving the ball. They're, they got to, th they had to give up the ball, and then they come right back and pick up the fumble. Now, that's typical of Permian. They're going to continue doing it. They're not going to give up till the end. Despite being down 23-0, they're not going to give up, and it would be nice to see him get a touchdown. Maybe we'll slip one on just to, uh, so it doesn't become a blowout. All right, back to you guys. All right, there was a penalty on the last play. There you see the official picking the flag up, Norm. Holding against Yates, and... This is the Whopper holding. This is the mortal sin holding against Yates, the 10-yarder. <laughs> there are so many penalties these days. And then there's certain penalties in pros, there's certain yardage, and certain college, there's certain yardage, and certain high Five school. Five for this, yardage. 10 for that, 15 for this and that. I know. I, I called uh, Jim Ely, uh, who is a prominent uh, official, works a lot of top high school football games in the area, and talked to him for a few minutes yesterday just to brush up on the differences in some of the penalty yardage. But you're right. Uh, they're... There are lots of penalties in football these days. First down at the 38-yard line movement by Yates. No flag down. Lot is wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Ooh, did he get whacked? Sure did. The worst thing for a running back, I mean, the thing you hate the most if you're the running back, is for one guy to stop your progress. You don't mind so much getting popped by one guy. That's one-on-one. -on -one. But if a guy gets a hold of your legs, you can't go anywhere, and the city of Houston's about to arrive. That's what running backs don't like at all. Lock comes off the field. Sider back in the game. It's going to be second down, 10 yards to go. At the 38-yard line of Houston Yates. Harrington rolling right. Wings it out there. Ooh, another great catch by Anderson in what would appear to be a losing effort this afternoon. You certainly can't find anything wrong with Anderson's performance. There's another flag down, however, but let's go ahead and watch the replay first. Maybe we can see what the flag is for. Notice Harrington on the roll and the man tracking him and then whacks him. I would not be surprised if that were a Houston Yates penalty for hitting after Harrington delivered the ball. Meanwhile, Anderson's a magician. If Anderson catches six passes today, he breaks the all-time record 
for Odessa Permian catches in a season. He has just tied it. That's number five. Anderson needs one more catch. It would be 71. Now, what are we going to call here? Alex still talking it over. The penalty indicated against uh, Yates, 7.59 left to play. Meanwhile, 23 to nothing, the score. Yates over Permian. Wait. Penalty declined Wait, to take no. the yardage in the uh, first down. That should be tacked on to the end of the play. That's a personal foul. Now, John yeah. Wilkins is out there saying, hey, give me a break here. Well, you know. <laughs> just got a shot. Was that crazy, Ray? I just looked at the monitor for a second. That's what John Wilkins was protesting. Apparently, he got a reasonable answer from referee Marvin Cantor as to why the personal foul penalty was not tacked on to the end of that play. Well, it'll be first down at the 28-yard line as Permian gets closer to a score. They've been averaging about 34 points a game, but they've got nothing this afternoon, and the flags come flying now. Still 7.59 to go, and it's been a kind of a long break here in between plays. Offsides, Permian. So it'll be first down 15. The right side right got tackle. the wrong snap count. What was that song by, uh, who was it? Uh, I was going to, I was going the right way, you were going the wrong way. Who's the guy from New Orleans who uh, sang that, uh, Ray, not Captain uh, Hook? You're uh, listening to those country and western <laughs> stations again. I try to tell you, easy listening. <laughs> no, it was rock and roll, but it was in the 50s, and nobody can remember those songs. Nobody wants to. The pass is overthrown, incomplete, down at the 20-yard line. It's too tall. You know, if they'll run that play again, but run it as a fake and have Anderson break off it deep, the Houston players reacted immediately to come forward as Harrington pumped his arm. I thought of the guy who sang the song. It was Dr. John, but I can't remember the name of the song. I was on the inside, and you were on the outside. Hey, any, some nonsensical anything song. Anything you say, right? Okay. Second down, 15 to go at the 33-yard line. Anderson splits left and Lauder back down to the right. Another play action fake. Good blocking this time. And a quick toss over to the tight end. And they have not utilized Watson this afternoon. Nolan Watson, 161 pound junior tight end. Tackle made by Melvin Foster. So they get a few on the reception. That's a play they probably should have gone to long ago as the wide receivers head downfield and the linebackers either drop deep in coverage or come for the quarterback. That inside belly zone that five seven eight yards down from the line of scrimmage has been fairly open third down nine yards to go at the 27 with just over seven minutes to play Harrington will roll right and he'll lose one tackler he's got nobody open out there now he will have to keep the ball and he swarmed under at the 33 yard line Larry Gill over there to make the tackle. So was Chris Gardner, the strong side linebacker. Boy, the you just cannot say enough about the job that the Yates defense has done. And when you start uh, handing out accolades, Norm, to the defensive line, you got to remember the linebackers. We've mentioned their names so many times. And, and the secondary players, they are covering the receivers. The only catches made today by Anderson have been under a lot of pressure and with defenders all over him. Anderson's caught, made several nice catches, but a couple were at the end of the first half, and they've kept Anderson contained, not controlled, but contained. contained. Harrington on fourth down. Again, he's sacked at the 31-yard line, and that is a bundle of sacks for the Yates defense. Number 66, Melvin Foster in there to make the tackle. AC with another sack for Houston Yates. He said it a lot today, hadn't he? And now it's a... Melvin... Still has a few more things to say. He has been ushered off the field by head uh, by Hobson, and really, there's not a lot of call for that. Okay, with the score 23 to nothing, Yates 6:15 left to play in the football game, and we'll be back. Well, while you were away.
Well, while you were away, the Yates uh, fans unveiled the wave. The only problem with it is, Norm, if, if you don't have the seats filled all the way around the stadium, it kind of peters out. Yeah, those, <laughs> those two people over in 112 really didn't get it going well, did they? <laughs> First and 10 for the Lions at the 31-yard line. The give is to Bailey. They've come on that inside end off to Bailey a lot today. And this time, Permian stops it, but Johnny Bailey is way over 100 yards rushing this afternoon. And that late flag apparently will be another penalty against Permian, at least the reaction of the players on the field and the crowd to it indicate that penalty will be a step off. It is another personal foul against Permian, the third for late hit today. The problem for the Permian team is they're a swarm the ball defensive type of team. Bailey is a, as you get to see some shucking and jiving on the eight sideline, saw a great banner that said, Mojo No Mo. <laughs> <laughs> with a big, big banner. That's a great shot. The problem for the, the officials and for Permian is Bailey's a squirmy type of running back. He, he, he's always making a last move, and you never quite get the feeling he's down. That's not in defense of a late hit so much as it is to tell you Bailey's the type of guy you hit until you got him surely down. Okay, Price gets off, and here we go again. 40, 35, 30, and down to the 24-yard line. Lawrence King. And we got another flag down. This one back near the line of scrimmage. And it was Darren Alban who uh, saved the touchdown. But let's go back the other way. Wipe it out. Backs in motion against the Houston Yates Lions on the play. And it'll wipe out a substantial, almost 30-yard gain for King. Lawrence King playing in the shadow of Johnny Bailey. But when they give him the ball and he's got the blocking up front, he shines too. Two excellent running backs paired up with quarterback Charles Price. You just can't find any weaknesses with the Yates football team. The only thing that has tended to bother them this year is the mistakes and penalties and that sort of thing. But heck, uh, when you can have uh, five personal fouls, miss an extra point, cough up the ball a couple times, throw an interception or two, and still beat uh, a team 34 to seven like they beat Holmes last week in San Antonio, that really says something. Here comes Bailey again. He cuts to the outside, 35. What a move by Bailey. He's down to the 26-yard line, and he is putting on a show. Bailey approaching 200 yards in rushing now. Let us, as you see Yates celebrate, let us detail their year for you. As you see Bailey, watch a guy that's always thinking touchdown. Right here, Bailey starts thinking touchdown. Now he can stay inside and get an extra five, but that's not where the touchdown is. Now watch the cut back here. He's thinking touch, touch, get me in the end zone. A lot of guys, when they break the line of scrimmage, look for where they're going to go down. Bailey looks for where he's going to wind up. 187 yards on 18 carries. Well, he had something like 242 last week against Holmes. That's 429 yards in the last two weeks for Bailey. Well, here, here's some more. And here we go again, 20, 15, 10, 5, and it's another touchdown for the Yates Lions, and it's Johnny Fisher who has just come into the ball game, replacing King, and they have got yet another back who can carry it. Johnny Fisher. Johnny Fisher doesn't say here whether he's a junior or a senior. I've got, you know, I have a sneaking suspicion he's, he'll probably be back next year. Let me give you an outrageous statistic, okay? That is the 41st time this year Johnny Fisher has carried the ball. You got that in your mind? The 41st time. 41st carry for Johnny Fisher. Not many carries in 16 games. 13 for touchdown. Oh, my. Is that not outrageous? <laughs> Smith connects on the extra point kick. Seven and a quarter yards every carry this year for Fisher. 13 of his 41 carries for touchdown. Okay, 5.03 left to play in the football game as we get a look at Fisher's touchdown run. How about that cutback? We were talking about Bailey earlier. Slips about three or four tackles and goes in for another score. It's now 30 to nothing, Houston Yates, with 5.03 left to play. We'll be back with the conclusion of today's 5A championship in just a moment. Rounds of play. All right, 5.03 left to play in the ball game, 30 to nothing. Yates, it has become a rout, and the feelings expressed right there on the face of that young lady from Odessa Permian. They have not 
been accustomed to uh, this kind of drubbing. It's been a long time since anybody beat up on Odessa Permian like this. Yes, it has been, but it's not been a long time since Yates beat up on people. Let's, <laughs> That's right. Let's all see Sale their year for you. Now, these are all 5A schools they played. They started the year, they beat Houston, Washington, 31-0. Then beat Beaumont, Westbrook. Now, that's the champion in this class a couple years ago. They beat him 46-16. Then beat Worthy, 26-0. Houston, Austin, 70-0. Houston, Milby, 51-0. Madison, 27-14. Sterling, 48-6. Davis, 72-0. Houston, Jones, 13-6. Then Wheatley, 68-0. Sam Houston, 50-0. Springwood, 37-0. West Orange Stark 19-6, Jones 21-15, and San Antonio Holmes 34-7. Holy cow. And meanwhile, while the offense was scoring lots of points, the defense got eight shutouts. New quarterback in the game, Rich Fletcher, has replaced Harrington at quarterback. Fletcher is a senior, started the season at quarterback, as we mentioned earlier, and he will be playing here in the final moments of this game. You know who's sitting at home kicking themselves right now? Jesse Jones High School. The they, only team that played uh, Yates close. Twice. They lost to him by seven, and they lost to him by six. Jesse Jones, no offense to this Permian, Jesse Jones is sitting home right now saying, we may be the second best team in this state. 421 left, second down, nine yards to go at the 16-yard line. Fletcher looking to throw. Oh. And it is almost intercepted at the 25-yard line by Foster. Well, Coach Luther Booker, who's got... A great football program this year. He is about to win his first state championship, the first for Yates. Booker's record, 137 wins, 31 losses, six ties at Yates High School. But if there has been a wrap, it's been the fact that they've gotten so close but have not won the state title. But they're going to win it this year. You are watching a Permian team struggle right now offensively. Realize that in the last 21 years of their football program, they have lost 26 games. This is a team that never, you talk about never losing lose. badly, never loses. Well, let's see, 76, 3, and 5 in the decade of the 80s. They've only lost three ball games in the 80s. That's six football seasons. Uh, and Permian today is, is in their 25th playoff game since 1980. 25 playoff games in, in this decade. I wonder the last time this coaching staff had November and December off. <laughs> for, for, for Coach Wilkins, probably never. Ooh. Ball taking a Permian roll. It'll be touched down at the 38-yard line with three minutes and 23 seconds left in the contest. Again, I want to express my appreciation to our crew today, Eric Norberg, our TD down in the truck, along with Eddie Clinton, our camera guys. Great shots on the football game today. And uh, darn good work by our slow-mo replay people, too. Got you some nice, candid close-up shots. And I'm sure that uh, all those people down in Houston who are Yates fans with VCRs will be forever <laughs> grateful because they'll roll this one back and forth a lot of times in the years to come. You know, I was just thinking something, and we've sent your friend out to check on it. Yes, Les Palmer, our spotter. I, I wonder I wonder where 30 to nothing ranks in the history of Permian losses. I can't imagine that they've been beaten this badly very often. Uh, they no. lost to Euless Trinity 8-7. to seven. They, You know, they've lost some games in the playoffs, but... Shoot, this is a club that came in here unbeaten in their last 31 games, and that wasn't even close to the longest streak in their school's history. They won 41 in a row from 79 through 82. Of course, uh, Odessa Permian is the defending co-champion. They tied with Beaumont Westbrook for the title last year right here at Texas Stadium. They played to a 21 all time. Santa is definitely on the Yates side of the... Oh, my goodness, he's sitting... Well, he's trying to bring some cheer to the Permian side of the stadium here just a couple minutes left but he's been on Yates side for most of the afternoon Yates has kept their first team on the field except new quarterback now for Yates it is Kevin Phillips at quarterback for Yates now Phillips handing off on first down well, Charles Price 
the starting quarterback for Yates was wrapping up a terrific season came in here with 2300 yards passing 23 touchdown passes and he has directed a flawless offense this afternoon Johnny Bailey we've already amplified on what a sensational game he's had today Lawrence King the other starting running back ripped off some real good runs it's been a total effort both offensively and defensively for Houston Yates. Penalty marker is down. Thrown right in the spot where you usually get holding on the second down play, and that's right. 78, we got a shot of him a moment ago. We didn't talk about him much today. Darren Nassett, the right guard for Houston Yates. He's the starter at that position, Norm. He's still in the game. Darren Nassett weighs, at least uh, he's listed on the roster at 265. And I think he's, I think he's really even, even bigger than that. The, uh, <laughs> interestingly enough, the person I talked to in Houston, I'm not going to mention their name, of course, who was giving me the inside tidbits. He said, you know, they give you a little line or two about each player, you know, strong, fast, intelligent. With uh, Darren Nassett, the 265-pound senior guard, said, very strong, comma, maybe overweight. <laughs> But he's a good player. He lines up at the right guard spot, right next to the center there. Option play, and they pitch back up to the 35, 37-yard line. Gary Williams, another one of those fleet running backs for Yates, who doesn't get to carry the ball much, but uh, they do use him on kickoff and punt returns. He's in there matched up now in the uh, backfield with the new quarterback, Phillips. And it is a disconsolate Odessa Permian bench. Well, it's almost a feeling of disbelief. It's like... How could this them, happen? Yeah, for them almost a tragedy unfolding that they've never seen before. I see that fellow came prepared. He had a t-shirt that said blowout. Notice he wasn't showing it early today. No, that's true. Uh, that, that's, that type of stuff is easy to show in the fourth quarter when you're up 30 to nothing. I, I bet you he didn't walk in with that first shirt above there showing blowout. No, sir. Tell you what, Yates respected Permian coming in. They knew they, they had to get this club out of the game because of Permian's tradition of coming back. And there's your time. 125 left to play. And Yates will punt, something they haven't done much of this afternoon. It was a cat and mouse game in the first quarter as neither team could get anything going offensively. But uh, from the early stages of the second period on, the game has belonged to the Yates Lions. Yates will take a timeout with a minute 13 left in the contest. This is only Yates' third punt of the day and is their first punt since way back early in the second quarter. Well, the Permian crowd is quiet. In fact, Very the whole quiet. the crowd is quiet. I'm surprised that Yates isn't doing a little bit of get down. To tell you the truth, it, it happened during a break, uh, during our halftime show, but uh, I got a chance to hear the Permian band play that the fight song, the theme from Hawaii 5 and they really had the crowd rocking it. Honest to gosh, that's been about the highlight today for, for Permian. The fans made more noise when the band was playing at halftime than they've been able to at any time during the contest because it has been so thoroughly dominated by Houston Yates. Very high kick. Fair catch is called for by Anderson at the 27-yard line, and that's where Permian will put the ball into play. Want to wish you a happy holiday season, Norm. Thank you, Ray, and thank you to our viewers. Uh, I don't see any suitcases packed. Uh, you know, you're one of these guys. I can't keep up with you. You, you may have three or four things going in one day. You've shocked me today. You're not dashing out of here to catch a taxi to the airport and do another game someplace tonight? No. You're take the night off, spend it home with the little woman, huh? That's right. That's All right. I tell you what, there'll be some celebrating in Houston. <laughs> They'll leave right <laughs> after the be. game, but I tell you what, nobody, nobody in the red and yellow is going to be asleep at 10 tonight. Rest assured. Butcher out to Anderson, incomplete. It's the 25-yard line. And again, our congratulations to the other teams who qualified for the finals in all five of the UIL categories. We have had a partial from the uh, Tomball Sweetwater football game earlier. 
was a three nothing Sweetwater in the first quarter. By the way, this Houston Yates team will get to try to improve on a record next year. They have won 47 consecutive games in district play. That is the all time. Uh oh, oh my, look at this. It's picked off and it will be a touchdown for Yates. Oh my goodness, Reginald Briggs was anticipating that. He timed it perfectly. Knight right in front of Anderson and waltzed in for another six points. And that will bring the score to a shocking 36 to nothing, Yates. And Greg, one of those first stringers who was in there right up to the end of the game. And that picture tells it all. Kind of begins to remind you of Cowboys versus uh, Cincinnati. Remember, remember that one, Norm? It, yeah, except it just didn't. It was just relentless. It, it just never ended. Except the Cowboys get blown out a lot more often than Odessa. Well, Permian that's true. Does. Uh, Permian doesn't get blown out. Period. Okay, the extra point try by Quentin Smith, and he's had a limber foot this afternoon. And he puts it through the uprights, and it's now 37 to nothing. Yates with 56 seconds left to play. Well, the state championship in 5A will go to Houston Yates outright. And here is perhaps the last points of the ball game. Well, Briggs has seen that play before, and the pass hits Briggs in, in full flight. Anderson just can't get a hold of him, and Briggs is gone. Another one of those players for whom there will be some offers, you get the feeling, after the year. Sure will. Briggs, a 160-pound senior. And you've got to think you'll be playing some college football next they, year. They've got some nice players in this club. We oh, haven't even don't mentioned, they? We haven't even mentioned, like, outside linebackers Chris Gardner and Kenneth Payne, who are key to the club. You know, the interior line, when we showed you a shot of Garrett earlier, it, it's easy to concentrate on the stars, the good and the, and the uh, Foster, Foster the man, right. and the safeties, Eaglin and Moore. But this is a fine football. I tell you what, a football recruiter could do worse than just set up the shot at Houston Yates and say, every year, give me your 15 bets. You could do worse than that, believe me. And in fact, <laughs> there may be a couple of guys setting up shop to do it right now. 37 to nothing, Houston Yates.